I'm Brom Briggs. I built these two ships here, uh, World War Brick, this year at 2017. Um, so this one is the USS Johnston. Um, it's a Fletcher class destroyer. Um, and then this one next behind it is the USS Sangamon, um, an escort carrier. Uh, its class is kind of unusual because it was converted from an oiler, um, and so hence its unusual shape compared to most. Um, but and so um, the Johnston was uh, made earlier or mid to late end of the war. Um, originally planning to be uh, be a destroyer, so it wasn't converted from everything or from anything. Um, it was uh, like like I said, um, it was towards the end of the war, but it fought in the Pacific uh, Pacific campaign. Um, so, but uh, it's got f uh, five of these. Uh, let's see, can never remember. I have all this stuff here uh, for it, uh, but it's got five uh, five inch guns and then six to ten. 40 or 20 millimeter okay. anti-aircraft guns right here and here, um, as well as 21 inch torpedo tubes right here that would turn off to the side to release. Some of them don't very well, but um, and then just anti-aircraft nests here and here, and then the very back. Um, also, it's kind of noteworthy to say I um, when I first I first had this last year. Um, but I used a lot of brick arms elements to help uh, ease along the build. And this year it's completely purist. There's nothing um, third party whatsoever. It's all brick built. Um, but, and so it's uh, in actuality, like it's real dimensions. It's like uh, 375 feet, just about a little more than that. And then uh, about 40 feet across um, and carried about 300 men in it. Um, but in World War II, it was hit um, and sunk, but the um, the crew had enough time to exit the uh, ship, so most of them made it out alive. Okay. I, li I like how smooth both the ships you have here, and I know we'll talk about the other one in a second, but both of them looks really smooth, and I really like that. It, it doesn't have that. There's so sometimes the build does look good with like yeah. a lot of exposed studs or something, but I like how you've made everything look very smooth yeah. uh, and, and sleek, kind of looking like that. Yeah. So in the front deck, actually... The front deck um, was really difficult here. I'll remove this here for a second because uh, it went from six studs down to five and then down to five and a half, a little bit more than a half, five and two tiles uh, or four and two tiles to four to three and two tiles to three to two and two tiles to two and then to one and two tiles and then finally to one before it tapered off and I couldn't put anything there. Uh, and so it uses a lot of jumpers underneath it. A lot of jumper plates and um, different types of connections. It's a whole mess underneath, <laughs> as well as being sloped up smoothly. Um, so it starts off here with uh, being two plates and two bricks high, uh, plus tile, to in, right here in the front being uh, about four bricks high. And so, but the whole deck is because there was enough space, I managed to just put a few more uh, studs underneath it and give it the nice uh, sloped look you can see here without uh, ruining. It with like lots of steps mm -hmm. um, and so that was uh, another modification I made from last year so it's a lot smoother now um, I kind of did that in the back as well it's a little bit more difficult especially with the anti-aircraft nest because it's a weird kind of hexagon shape in uh, actual in like reality even though it looks like a triangle so we had to uh, capture that look I actually had um, brick arms U clips holding it together and then uh, Andrew Summers came over and helped me uh, create it to a purest look and so there's a few pieces in there that are kind of mismatched discolored but that's because it was all impromptu made here <laughs> yeah uh, always uh, you know making it better yeah yeah that's exactly what I tried to do um, and then also uh, in when I uh, came home after World War Brick last year um, I was looking at my book and then I realized if I push the page like that there's a whole other turret that would have been right here that I completely missed and so I had to chop the section right around here uh, and add about five more bricks in order to fit this and then make it a little longer there. And so um, that was kind of a pain, but I wanted to be meticulous in making it realistic and uh, to scale as well. And so um, that was after World War Brick last year. And then I also got rid of some brick arms elements on the turrets, made them a little shorter. Uh, they're about the size of a two by three plate. And then I got them down to a little less than that. Um, and then also here, it's kind of I think it would be fun to show, but, oh, this one's a bad example, sorry. But here, um, so I had actually very few one-by-one uh, -one clips, 
but the ones that I did have were broken and that's the ones that you can see I used here for the <laughs> turret so it's I didn't break them on purpose but um can blame Lego for that thanks to their new uh newer ones. Use every piece you've got there though. <laughs> yeah and so that was that was something and then also on the antenna um I guess it's kind of noteworthy to say if I can get it out of here um so the antenna the very tip of it itself is actually uh three wide track links um that I had got um at a used store let's see if I can pick this off and then put it over here uh so for the contrast you can see it's got some Lego minifigure hands on an older uh, connector piece as well as the track links with a bar placed through them try, uh, trying to give off the as realistic as uh, I can for an antenna without also using non-lego elements and so very cool so that's the first ship you've got here and then the second the second one the bigger aircraft carrier how does that connect to this as far as the historical timeline so historically uh, this is the USS Sangamon here I'll move this away a little bit so we can bring it up but um, so they both fought in uh, the same battle as well as uh, they were kind of in the same task force okay. called Taffy 3. Um, and so, whoop. let's see if I can bring it up here. So the Sangamon uh, was converted like an, from an oil tanker, like I said earlier. Um, it, so it's got a weird kind of unusual shape for um, an escort carrier. It's a little bit smaller than an actual aircraft carrier. And so uh, it was used to mainly transport the planes rather than land them and uh, fly them off. Um, but uh, it transported um, Hellcats and uh, Corsairs mainly, and that's what you can see here at, uh, for the miniature planes is uh, probably Corsairs. I kind of put them together hoping they would be one of the two. Depends on how you look at them. Um, but so the Sangamon, uh, when I was doing research actually, um, it was really ironic, but um, it had, uh, it, was then, it was built in uh, 1939 and then to the war effort. Uh, within nine months they had converted it into an escort carrier. Um, and it survived all of World War II, um, only to meet its uh, doom in uh, Osaka, Japan, where it was uh, scuttled and used for scrap parts. Uh, and so ultimately the Japanese, I guess you could say, did defeat it, <laughs> uh, which is rather sad. Um, but, and so it's got um, a working elevator here. I used to have a gear on the side that I could twist that would bring it up and down, but that broke after transportation last year. Um, and then there should have been another one in the back, but I just uh, didn't have the time, I guess, to put it in. That's another thing. I'm always trying to make it better, trying to make it more accurate and realistic. Um, the side anti-aircraft guns I actually made uh, just like three days ago. I've been a procrastinator, um, but they're, they're just kind of like very loose, but um, tried to make those accurate as well. Uh, this whole side panel catwalk is used with snot and some clips you can see here. Um, and then with a couple lifeboats. And then there's a larger lifeboat underneath. But most of the detail is actually on the side of the ship. Uh, if you compare to the picture here, um, lots of the little portholes and uh, deck sides um, are actually where they should be under this uh, ship. So you notice I did, uh, I used the Technic bricks. So there's four portholes there, two there, two there, two there. And then I uh, did that exact same um, location underneath the boat, trying to get, make it as accurate as possible. Um, and so try to spare no detail, especially on the hole being the hardest uh, thing to create um, and so it's got all of the little details I can spare and build I guess yeah nice and one thing I noticed is your planes like pretty much the whole thing is built almost upside down yeah. so how did that work um, so lots of people uh, actually that's one of the first things they'll notice um, is I, I disassembled one to show what would happen if I tried to build it right side up and lots of people uh, notice that it's built upside down um, which a, not a lot of Lego things usually are built upside down. Lego rarely puts studs upside down, save for like maybe Luke Skywalker in the cave. Um, but, and so it's, it was easier to put the, um, use binoculars to create the guns and then also to put the propeller on upside down with some cut, uh, flex tubing. Um, because if, if it were to build right side up, I couldn't use this clip there. And so, um, that, and then also given the wheels as well as, the um, pieces here, the binoculars used, uh, would make it really, really difficult uh, to build right side up. And so I just decided to build it, build it upside down as well. And so that would that makes it a little closer to the scale as well. They're a little bit bigger. Um, all of these are built in one 180th scale, uh, but the planes are probably a slightly larger than that. But that's as close as I could get them to, uh, uh, being to scale. Um, I guess. Uh, they, the pieces for the tail fin actually, the one by two inverted slopes, um, 
they're all uh, a lighter pale blue compared to the planes, um, which it's not entirely done um, on accident because lots of the planes did do that. Um, but also the pieces on uh, Brick Link and Dark Blue were only in two sets, so they're about three dollars a pop, and I didn't want to spend that money on just the little planes. Wow. Understandable. Yeah, well, I think both of these turned out really amazing, so I appreciate you taking us through them. I think there's some, some really cool details on both of them, so, and good job yeah, getting the details you. just right. And I, I love that you use the kind of reference book here and everything. So is this just like a general uh, like ship history book? or what? Uh, actually, this is really funny. Um, a friend of my mom's had an entire encyclopedia on World War II um, in his basement that he never used and so this is uh, 17 out of uh, 26 volumes wow. in the entire encyclopedia and so I was just flipping through and I really wanted to make a boat and I luckily found this one um, on the page and then after building this I wanted to build another one probably bigger and this was on the same page so it was kind of a coincidence came to be an accident that I built the both of them on uh, in the same battle on the same page as well um, and I've used it so much to the point where like the back is all cracked and broken now and so I'll have to rebind that and fix it later but but you're putting it to good use that's good it's better yeah. than just sitting <laughs> yeah um, so yeah there's I guess that's that's one point that could be made it also looks really nice in my room makes me look a lot more professional than I actually am uh, being on the high school budget of course <laughs> yeah well that's really neat I appreciate you taking us through the builds thank you yeah no problem anytime thank you